there are many fears that tackle the human psyche. Those of nature. Those of Martian. Those of war. And those of betrayal. Emergency warning gadgets are no longer items of luxury. They are now keys to survival in a world where disasters are common. An alternate reality where no one is safe, except for those that observe the events that unfold. That's why you're here. You may see this as some form of horror flick, or as a form of generic entertainment. Either way, they welcome you to tonight's presentation. Sit back, relax, grab refreshments of your choosing, as we bring to you Tales from the Weather Radio. This is NOAA Weather Radio All Hazards, station KEC-50 broadcasting on a frequency of 162 MHz, serving West Palm Beach, and originating from the National Weather Service office in Miami, Florida. Now here is the hazardous weather outlook for the eastern coastal areas of Florida. Day 1, tomorrow morning, small scattered thunderstorms capable of producing small ones, and hail the size of quarters throughout the day. Days 2 through 5, Tuesday through Sunday. Recent models suggest that a tropical storm will form within the Atlantic Ocean, and make landfall in eastern coastal areas extending from Florida Keys to Fort Pierce by mid-Friday. The models suggest that the cyclone may reach moderate hurricane strength. Even though it is far too early to confirm, if these models are true, the public is advised to stay tuned to any viable news source, the National Weather Service, and the National Hurricane Center for further information, including watches and warnings. Spotter Activation Statement Spotter activation will be needed going into late Thursday, and into early Sunday. Hurricane watch in effect for coastal areas extending from Key Largo to Vero Beach. The National Weather Service in Miami has issued a hurricane watch for the following areas. Key Largo, Miami, Homestead, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, Fort Pierce, and Vero Beach. As Hurricane Conrad gets closer, expect winds up to 75 miles per hour or higher. This may increase, and the forecast calls for thunderstorms from late Wednesday to early Friday. Hurricane force winds may be possible early Thursday to Thursday evening, and is expected to occur starting Thursday night all the way to early Sunday. Storm surges are likely to be around 4 to 8 feet offshore. Sailors are advised to port by tonight to secure their vessels. Hurricane watch Watches are issued when sustained winds of up to 74 miles per hour or more associated with a hurricane are expected in the current location within 48 hours or less. Stay tuned for further updates.
small, but moderately dangerous Hurricane Conrad closing in on coastal areas extending from Key Largo to Vero Beach. The National Weather Service in Miami has issued a hurricane warning for the following areas, Key Largo, Miami, Homestead, Fort Lauderdale, Palm Beach, Fort Pierce, and Vero Beach. Hurricane Conrad is continuing towards the coast of eastern Florida, and it is expected to make landfall within 24 hours, or by Friday, August 18. Winds up to 60 miles per hour are expected with this storm, and storm surges are expected to be around 3 to 7 feet offshore flooding out by early Saturday. Homes will suffer moderate to heavy damage. Mobile homes will either be extremely damaged or destroyed. Partial power failures are expected to occur. Tree damage is highly likely, with the possibility that they could be either snapped or uprooted, causing roadways to be blocked. Flooding may spread inward by a few miles, causing damage to structures near the beach. Storm surges may cause minor damage to bridges and roads. Flood waters may also be toxic. Although the power of this storm has slowly begun to die down, it can still cause casualties among those that do not evacuate the coast. Now is the time to check your emergency plan and to make necessary action to secure your safety. Efforts should now be undergoing to protect life and property. Ensure your survival kit is packed with three days of non-perishable food and water for each member of your group, and make sure it also includes medical supplies, a flashlight, and a battery-powered radio. If you live in an area that is highly vulnerable to flooding, evacuate and move to a safer location, preferably at higher ground. Inform those that have a connection to you about your survival plan if you chose to stay. If you live in a hotel, management will give you instructions on what to do. Always take advice from law enforcement and government officials, and evacuate if you are mandated to do such. Continue to monitor your local media outlets for further information on this dangerous weather system. The next forecast update will occur in 60 minutes. The following message is transmitted at the request of the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center. A voluntary evacuation still remains in effect for the eastern coast of Florida, as Hurricane Conrad continues to approach the coast. Those who have not yet evacuated, are advised to evacuate immediately. If you choose to stay, you face the following. Several portions of coastal areas will become inhabitable or inaccessible for days, possibly months after landfall. Most homes will be moderately to severely damaged. Mobile homes will be heavily damaged or destroyed. Commercial or residential buildings near may be heavily damaged. High-rise buildings may sway dangerously in the event. Wind speed begins to intensify during this storm. There is a small percentage a building may collapse entirely, but it is possible during this storm. Flying debris will be possibly widespread during this storm, and this may include small items including household tools and planks of wood. Any organisms caught outside will either be injured or killed by widespread debris. Tree damage is expected, with a possibility of debarking or uprooting. There is a chance livestock and crops will be completely destroyed. 
and it will be difficult to restock on food after the storm clears. To repeat, Hurricane Conrad is continuing to approach the coast of eastern Florida. Consider evacuating point this message will repeat in two minutes. We will update you on the current situation, as soon as new information is available. An administrative message, from the National Weather Service along with the National Hurricane Center. About one hour before Hurricane Conrad made landfall, the hurricane slowly began to dematerialize from the air, and the only remnants of it are a small, but cumulus cloud floating above Miami Beach, moving north at about 5 miles per hour. This has resulted in significantly less damage occurring to coastal areas than anticipated, However it did cause moderate damage to structures around in addition, it was reported, but not yet confirmed, that the hurricane did not have an eye in its center, which is unusual for a hurricane. If confirmed, this will mark Hurricane Conrad as the first hurricane to not have an eye in its center, making it difficult to identify the minimum barometric pressure. If your shelter was destroyed, or if anyone in your group was injured severely to the point you cannot treat them during this storm, dial 911 for assistance by medical and military personnel. Stay tuned for further information. The National Weather Service in Miami has issued a tornado warning for the following counties, Eastern Palm Beach County in Eastern Florida, all of Martin County in Eastern Florida, all of St. Lucie County in Eastern Florida, Okeechobee County in Central Florida, Northern Glades County in Central Florida, all of Highlands County in Central Florida, until 8 19 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At 5.58 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, National Weather Service Doppler radar was detecting that the cloud in Miami Beach that was left of Hurricane Conrad was beginning to rotate at an extreme pace. This storm is about 5 miles south of West Palm Beach and is moving northeast at 14 miles per hour. Locations impacted include West Palm Bacat, Stewart, Fort Pierce, Vero Beach, Okeechobee, Sebring. Take cover now. If you wait to see or hear it coming, it may be too late to get to a safe place. The safest place to be during a tornado is in a basement. Get under a workbench or other piece of sturdy furniture. If no basement is available, seek shelter on the lowest floor or an interior hallway or room such as a closet. 
Use blankets or pillows to cover your body, and always stay away from windows. If in mobile homes or a vehicle, evacuate them and get inside a substantial shelter. If no shelter is available, lie flat in the nearest ditch, or other low spot and cover your head with your hands. Please relay any reports of severe weather to the National Weather Service Office in Miami at toll free, 305, 229, 4450, or by posting it on our Facebook page, or tweet it using hashtag NWSGSP. Your message should describe the event in the specific location of where it occurred. Repeating, a tornado warning has been issued for the following counties, in Miami, Palm Beach, Martin, St. Lucie, Okeechobee, Glades, and Highlands. You're listening to 96.5 WPOW Radio. We now interrupt regular programming as an emergency alert is about to go on the air. Let me just check the end deck here. And, uh, uh, yep, we have an alert coming through now. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand by for a relay of a civil emergency message from Florida Emergency Management. The following message is transmitted at the request of the National Weather Service in conjunction with the National Hurricane Center and Florida Emergency Management. This is a summary of weather events that occurred August 15th to August 20th. Tropical Storm Conrad formed in the Atlantic Ocean and was promoted to Category 2 hurricane by August 16th. Moderate damage was expected with this hurricane. The hurricane made landfall near West Palm Beach and dissipated completely only two hours after making landfall, given that it was reported that it started dematerializing one hour before impact. The hurricane was confirmed to not have an eye, making it one of the first hurricanes to ever not have an eye in its center. Hurricanes without eyes, while very unlikely, make it significantly more difficult to track the barometric pressure of the hurricane. In addition, it left a small cloud hovering over Day Beach when it dissipated, which expanded into a massive cumulonimbus cloud, and was responsible for the formation of an F3 tornado which moved into St. Lucie County and dissipated when reaching Highlands County. Heavy damage has occurred, with an estimated casualty toll at 1,435,210, 540,200 of these are fatalities. An estimated $2,305,460 in total damages, both from the hurricane and tornado were recorded. Anyone within the area is affected by these storms are advised to stay at home for the rest of today and tomorrow, as cleanup crews need to sort out the damages caused by the weather a few days ago. Stay tuned for further updates and remember to check the forecast for any sudden changes in weather.
And there you have it. That was a civil emergency message for the eastern and central areas of Florida. We will resume regular programming shortly after this quick ad break.